so far. Um, and so I really like about it the added challenge. It's definitely a challenge, but also an opportunity to innovate. And I hope that for all of you that have found yourself thrust into this online world and you're thinking, what am I even doing every day, that maybe you'll find some surprises along the way um, that you'll bring into your school counseling practice, just added technology tools and added efficiencies of how to do your job and reach kids, um, even in an online environment. So I challenge you to keep your mind open and just kind of go with the flow and do your best. And we're here to help you. So a little bit more about K-12. K-12 has been around for the past 20 years. Believe it or not, we've been in this online space. So working from home, working online is not new to us. And hopefully we can impart some insights and information from what we've learned over um, this time in the online education world. Today, um, I'm going to introduce momentarily some of our counselors from the Alabama Virtual Academy, which has been around since school year 1617, and Alabama Destinations Career Academy, which is in its first year. And we have a powerhouse team of counselors here to share with you what things look like day to day and how they go about counseling in an online world. Um, but first, I wanted to set the stage, and for me, that starts with ASCA. And ASCA started um, recognizing virtual school counselors um, recently, and there's a position statement available. Uh, and I've linked it here on the next slide for you. Uh, what it, it's about two pages, and it just shares about what virtual school counseling looks like, some of the limitations in the environment, because as you've already experienced, there are limitations. But truly, after we acknowledge those, we really do everything in an online environment than you would do in a brick and mortar environment. Today, we're gonna to share more about what that looks like, so hopefully you can use it in your new setting. Uh, but check out this position statement if you'd like. It gives kind of a good overview of virtual school counseling, and some of our counselors helped author that um, when it was first adopted. So one other thing from ASCA, if we advance to the next slide, is there are a number of toolkits available that have come out since COVID happened and we're all thrust into this virtual world. So those toolkits that are in the box on the screen, you can, um, the links here on the slide, but just go to schoolcounselor.org, click on that COVID banner, and it's free to anybody. You don't have to be a member and you can access these free resources. What I recommend you do is whatever grade band you're working with, mostly high school, probably because we're here in in the uh, secondary session today um, click on that virtual high school counseling toolkit and it'll give you lessons resources literature recommendations like titles um, discussion questions all sorts of things you can start using you know today and this week in your virtual school counseling practice we today are going to share a lot of resources with you, but we didn't want to totally reinvent the wheel here, and this is a good starting point. So I wanted to point that out first and foremost. But let me kind of go back to what we do in an online environment. And on the next slide, you'll see something that looks familiar to you if you are um, a, if you implement. Uh, a comprehensive school counseling program following the ASCA national model. This is the delivery of services that all school counselors do. And this is the area where we probably have to get the most creative because in our regular day-to-day, face-to-face really is a very rare option um, because we may be serving kids all over the state and we might not live near them and we, we might not have a school building. So we get really creative in our delivery of services using different technology platforms forms and um, just to reach all of our kids. And so that's what we're going to share with you today. But what I challenge you to do is just whatever you're accustomed to doing in your school building, view yourself in this interim time period as a translator and you're going to translate what you do face to face into an online environment. And again, you'll leave with lots of ideas today about how to start doing that. Um, all right, let's move forward. And the last thing I wanted to leave you with as I intro this topic today is five keys to success for school counselors in a virtual environment. I'm gonna introduce our counselors here shortly, but I kind of totaled up our years of experience in the online world. And I think we have 30 years of online school counseling experience among us. And that's after all of our brick and mortar days. So these are some things that we have learned um, over that time that I wish someone had kind of 
told me to think about when I was first getting started in the online world. Number one is visibility. This is probably the biggest challenge you're gonna have at the beginning, is just making yourself visible, reminding your school community who you are, what you do for them, and how to reach you is gonna be imperative. You have the benefit of already establishing the connections with all of your school families and your students, um, but you might have students that don't normally seek out your help that need you during this unique time. So you need to conduct extra outreach, find ways for them to get in touch with you readily when they need you and just stay visible. Um, some ideas you're gonna hear from today of how to do that is you know, making a little Bitmoji cartoon character of yourself, um, establishing regular office hours where families know they can reach you during that time or drop into a common setting to come and see you or enter your office. You might be used to walking the halls in your school building and just seeing kids and checking in. Try to do that virtually with the classes that your teachers have set up. Pop in. Your kids will see your name. Um, they'll know you're still there and around. They can maybe chat to you if they need you later that day or what have you. Find a way to walk the halls in your school building virtually and just stay approachable and available. Referrals, you're gonna to need to figure out a way, a mechanism for those referrals to get to you. And keep in mind both self-referrals that are coming from your students or your parents and also your faculty and staff. So if you are a school district that uses Google Suite, for example, you might set up a Google form that's a referral form that anyone can fill out that you link in your email signature. For teachers, you might ask that they email you a specific information. Whatever's gonna work for you, figure that mechanism out and then communicate it so people know how they can make a referral. Keep in mind also, a lot of families are finding they need financial resources or maybe some more long-term counseling. So you're gonna to wanna to identify community organizations using your school resource officer or your school social worker, work with them to make a cheat sheet for yourself of all those community organizations so you can get families in touch with those outside referrals when they need them. So number three, documentation. Of course, this is important always, but I kind of ask you to think about ramping it up even in the online environment because we're often working almost in isolation from our home. You know, if Documentation is really key, both for yourself and also so who you're working with. All those staff members um, might need to be able to see what's what's been going on. Um, what the mantra we live by is: if it's not documented, then it didn't happen. So I challenge you, you know, to keep documentation of everything you're doing, even if that's not really your normal practice. Um, in in the school environment, um, you might want to consider doing that just uh, for yourself so that you have a log of what you're doing every day, the interactions you're making. And you can kind of see if you might be missing groups of students or classes or grade levels. Number four, technology, of course. You're gonna have to use it. You'll find these are useful tools for you. Um, depending on what your school and what your district uses, you're gonna find you have multiple different methods of communicating with families. And one thing you'll find is different families have different preferred ways of communication. So jot those down so you know you can reach families um, as quickly and efficiently as you can. And then of course, prepare for glitches. They happen, um, don't take them personally. It happens to everybody and just know that it will at some point. Finally, consultation. Um, I encourage you to plan for more than usual. You're gonna come across student scenarios you've never faced before. You're gonna be using technology tools and creating links and things that you've never done before. And you want someone that you can both consult with professionally, but also practice with in your platform or to test a link and just generally being able to phone a friend when you might be feeling isolated or might need to bounce an idea off of somebody, find somebody, whether it's another counselor at another school that you meet today, someone within your school building or one of us that's presenting today and used to the virtual world, find somebody and we're here for you. Finally, what I'll say is establish boundaries since you're working from home your schedule can really mesh and intertwine with your home life and your personal life. Same with your physical space. So whatever you can make work with that, I really encourage you to set some boundaries just so you can stay afloat. <laughs> 
So with that, I'm so excited to introduce a powerhouse team of five counselors today that we have for you who have been, of course, really busy with their school communities during this time, but have prepared today to share with all of you. So please join me in giving them a really warm welcome. I will allow them to speak to their background as they come on and present, but I want to welcome Tracy, Stephanie, Chandrisa, Candice, and Brianna um, as our team of counselors here to share with you. And I think I'll turn it over to Tracy to start us off. Okay, hi everyone. My name is Tracy Gulledge and I am the school counselor for middle school for Alabama Virtual Academy. Um, I, about 10 months ago, I transitioned into uh, the job here with Alva. I worked with, for 27 years with Eufaula City Schools and 21 of those years as the counselor. Uh, I taught first, second, and third grade also at Eufaula Primary School. So uh, this has been a learning curve for me and I can say that every day it just gets a little bit easier. And um, if I could get, Candace, if, I don't, if you wouldn't mind advancing to um, the screen with referrals, because today I'm gonna talk with you uh, about referrals, how we make our referrals here um, in the virtual setting. Okay, thank you so much, Candace. And uh, our referrals come from three different ways, from teachers, parents, or students, just like they do in the brick and mortar setting. And that was one thing I wanted to go back and kind of touch on about what Erica said when she read the position statement that um, we're providing the same services in the virtual world that you guys are providing in brick and mortar. And, and that is just so true. When I left the brick and mortar setting and came to Alva in the virtual setting, I realized that I'm doing the same things now that I did uh, for the, all those years in the brick and mortar setting. You're just finding new ways to do that. And, um, and every day you learn something new. So today I wanna to talk with you about the referrals and how they're made. We have a website uh, that's called Counselor Corner. And on that website, and I think Candace is going to pull that up for you and show you, we have a website that is for uh, parents and then a website that is for teachers. And when someone uh, makes a referral, they are going to that website, they're going to click on the referral form. And it is a Google form, uh, you know, kind of like Erica was talking about, if you guys have access to a Google suite, it's real important that when you're using a Google form that you are connected to a school Google account and that it's not your personal Google account that you're using uh, just because of FERPA reasons and confidentiality. So our, our referrals are initiated with a referral that looks similar to this that um, we're showing you now on the screen. And also those referrals are FERPA friendly, not using first and last name. We're going to use last name, first initial, and we're also going to use student number uh, when tracking our student information. So just to make sure that those are FERPA friendly. So uh, the referral is going to be initiated with um, submitting this Google form. And when we get that Google form, we're going to make a contact with the parent. And our, my initial contact is going to be calling the legal guardian, making a phone contact with them uh, to obtain background information, just like you would in a brick and mortar school. Um, a, another way you can do that, you could set up, we use Blackboard Classroom or Zoom. Um, and I like to set up a Blackboard meeting with the parent to um, just discuss any background information about the referral. And at that same time, when you're having that meeting with the parent, you could also have uh, your consent posted, uh, the consent for services, and that consent could be posted on the whiteboard and the parent signs that consent there in the meeting after you've discussed any background information. And after the parent signs consent, I, I did not learn about a SNP until I came to virtual but you can take a snip of the whiteboard and it captures um, the, uh, the signature and you have that for your records. If you choose not to do a Blackboard meeting or a Zoom meeting, then you obtain consent by sending the parent the form, the Google form, and they would complete that Google form and return it to you. And then you're ready to make contact with the student. Um, one of the things I like about when that Google form, when you receive, um, that information from the Google form, it's creating that Excel document. And so you can track all of your contacts uh, with that student. You can track those on the Excel document when you meet with the student. That kind of helps you, um, you know, keep track of when you've had contact with the student. And 
uh, then you're ready to set up your meeting with the student. So, Candace, can we go to the slide that has uh, Counselor Horner? Uh, the, there we go. Um, can we go to the next one? And then you're, when I have the contact with a student, I send out in the top um, left-hand corner, it says coffee with the counselor. That shows the student that there's going to be an individual session that we're going to meet. They're going to get this um, through their Blackboard account actually. And we're going to have a meeting in Blackboard, um, just me and the student. When the student comes into the Blackboard classroom, post it on the whiteboard. We're gonna go over confidentiality um, for that session. And then I'm gonna actually have the student pick up one of the tools and sign the confidentiality agreement just to you know, let the student know that I am going to maintain confidentiality unless it's one of those exceptions that I feel like they're in some type of danger of hurting themselves or some, some type of danger situation that I feel like I need to contact an outside agency. So they would um, get that invitation to come to coffee with the counselor and to record my notes, um, after being in a school for a long time, and I'm kind of old school, but I still write down my notes in a binder, and I have the divisions with the letters A through Z, and I keep those notes filed in. I lock those notes. I have a locking filing cabinet that I can lock those notes in, but I do still have my notes in a notebook, and that's how I'm keeping up with those contacts with the students. After I meet individually, individually with a student, then I'm going to place that student's name in my Outlook calendar for the next meeting, um, you know, just to help me track those meetings with the student. We're also going to meet with students uh, having small group sessions and large group, large group sessions, just like you guys do in brick and mortar. Um, one of the things, and also Erica talked about that, having um, the kids pick a Bitmoji. Some of the kids don't like to have their picture, have their camera on when they're talking. So uh, we might have them choose a Bitmoji to represent themselves and they can place that Bitmoji on the screen. Candace, do you mind going back to the other screen that has um, the chairs? And so they can place the Bitmoji on the screen to kind of represent themselves. So every time you meet with that small group, they would use that same, you would pull the same slide up. You would um, save it from session to session and you could have your small group um, with those students and they know which bit, Bitmoji represents them. Also with large group sessions, we have those once a month and um, students are invited, mine are sixth, seventh and eighth graders. We uh, combine the Ask a Mindsets with our Alabama State Standards and um, pick the session topics for each month. And um, this actually was a session that we did that I did on coronavirus. It was about what students were doing over the last couple of months to deal with the coronavirus. Um, but we do sessions on anger, on stress, um, on career choices, and all of those sessions are gonna be located in the shared resources um, that you guys will receive the link to. And one of the things that I learned, and I, I had a very good teacher to help me with this, who is Candace, and you're gonna meet her in just a minute, about making all of your sessions interactive. It's not just talking to the kids, you're having them, uh, whether it's react and chat, write on the whiteboard, uh, create a snippet and place it on the whiteboard, but you're having them um, communicate with you, jumping on the mic, talking during the session. They're not just sitting there, you know, remaining silent while you're pretty much um, talking with them the whole time, lecturing them. They need to be interactive. Um, we've had, classroom huddles where we sing songs, and this is with sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. We did a hand washing song to Old Time Road where I, paid, I put the words on the whiteboard and used my cell phone for the music so they could hear the background music and we sang the song to um, Washing Your Hands to Old Time Road. For Red Ribbon Week, we had a banner that the kids came to the whiteboard and signed the banner making a pledge to uh, remain drug free. So there are lots of ways that you can get the kids to be um, engaged in the lesson. Um, you know, not just having it just a lecture that you're talking with them the whole time. Um, one of the things that I would definitely encourage you to do is find a buddy who knows more than you know about the virtual environment. That's what I did. And, and Candace was my buddy that taught me a lot of things about what to do and when there's a question, you know, that you have someone that you can pick up the phone and call and talk to, we Skype a lot back and forth. Um, and always to remember that even if it seems difficult today and you might make mistakes today, tomorrow will be easier. Um, 
because each day that I've been in this virtual environment, which only been, it's only been 10 months, each day is definitely easier. The last thing I wanted to tell you about referrals is uh, we do make referrals to DHR and to other community agencies, just like you do in the brick and mortar. Uh, our kids happen to be located all over the state. So sometimes that can be kind of challenging because we don't have that uh, relationship with one DHR worker like you might have, like I had when I was in the brick and mortar school. Um, you're contacting people throughout the state. But we in the shared folder, we placed the um, referral for that for you to make a report if it's necessary and the guidelines for doing that. So if you, after a one-on-one -on -one, or if a teacher put, uh, sends you something about something a child has said in their classroom or posted in chat and you need to make the referral, you're going to follow the same steps in virtual that you would in brick and mortar. You're going to submit that form and the form is there for you to submit. And then you're gonna follow up with a call to um, the intake worker at DHR. And the last thing is about our suicide protocol that you guys do in brick and mortar. We have uh, a protocol that we also have in the virtual environment here at ALVA. And if a student in um, one of their classes or if they make a comment about harming themselves, then you're gonna follow through with that same protocol that you would contact the parent um, interview the child and uh, make sure that you're trying to help the parent get, if it's necessary, if, it, if the situation is necessary, to help the parent get them set up for an evaluation. And if there's a parent that doesn't comply with that, if you have concerns about the child and you feel like the, the parent needs to do follow up, the, the parent needs to do follow up, but they don't seem willing to do follow up, then there's steps that you need to take for that, whether it is involving the local um, Department of Human Resources or sometimes maybe even a, a, a someone from the Sheriff's Department going to the home to talk to the parent if they are not willing to follow up and have the child seen by someone. Okay, I think that's it. I'm going to pass it on to the next person and good luck. Good morning, thank you guys for coming. Um, my name is Stephanie Williams and I work with the ninth and 10th graders here at Alabama Virtual Academy. I live in Odenville, Alabama. Um, I have 28 years experience in brick and mortar and I taught um, 10 of those in Birmingham City as a third grade teacher. Um, and then I worked in St. Clair County for 18 years. I was a third grade teacher, a fourth grade teacher and a school counselor. Um, so I, I'm like Tracy, I have lots of brick and mortar experience. Um, when I first came to Alva, I was like, what have I gotten myself into? Um, but like Tracy said, it is, it gets easier every day. You're just going to transition what you do in brick and mortar and just put it in a virtual setting. Um, and, um, and, and basically do the same thing that you've always done. Um, Candace, if you want to go to the next slide. Okay, so um, we're going to answer these questions for you about virtual counseling. So what does virtual counseling and advising actually look like? Well, we, um, we have small groups, one-on-ones, and whole groups. Um, we also have a devising section, uh, sessions for our students. Um, we, um, we have homeroom huddles once a month, and that's where we meet with um, the entire high school and we talk about the seven mindsets. Um, we follow the same referral. Um, oh, Candace, you want to go ahead and pull that up? Pull up a homeroom huddle. Uh, in our homeroom huddle, we also do like a college spotlight where we spotlight one of the colleges of our teachers and they can come um, and give, their, get a, give a shout out for their college and talk about their college. Uh, we give the students the admission requirements, the GPA um, and ACT score. We talk about um, some of the things that um, that college is basically known for. Um, do we have any homeroom huddles in there? We also talk, we, we also talk about um, 
careers um, and we, we kind of focus on college careers and then um, we talk about the we've talked about the military um, and we focus on some of those that you know that that are more um, more of a trade kind of thing. Um, this is just an example of one of the college spotlights that we did um, from one of our teachers. I'm sorry for the noise. I decided to come outside today. Um, and then what we, what we did on this one was we talked about uh, the careers that kind of go along with um, you know, the, the University of South Alabama. Um, so our career spotlight here, <clears throat> there's an example of it. And the kids love this. The kids, we, we asked them what they <clears throat> liked most about our huddles this year, and they said it was definitely the college spotlights. But we do try to pick careers that they might not have heard about before, so that they kind of have a variety of things that, um, that they can kind of explore for their future. Um, we also do um, advising sessions where we talk about um, the courses that will be offered, like we, we had them in the spring for the courses that would be offered in the falls. We talk about the pathways, the different diploma types, um, and um, we talk about AP, dual enrollment. We give them all the information that they need for that. Um, for them to choose their electives, we send out a Google survey where they choose their electives and their pathways, and then we keep those on file. Um, we also do the one-on-one -on -one counseling with our students, um, and those are usually based on the referrals from the student, the parent, or a teacher. And um, we also do small groups. Um, if you wanna pull up one of those, Candace, this is an example of like a, a, a grief group, okay? Um, so we, we do make them interactive so the kids can actually participate. We do that even in the counselor huddles where we have all four grades in high school in there um, and they're able to, you know, to interact within the lesson, whether they're using the chat, writing on the whiteboard. Um, we let them jump on the mic and we talk, uh, allow them to talk. Um, so there is discussion and interaction going on throughout those. This is an example of the presentation that we did for um, honors in AP. And of course, they're interactive as well. The kids can ask questions as we go through there. And we, you know, we, we want them to be um, aware of all the different diploma types that we offer and that kind of thing. Um, did I cover everything on that one? Oh, here's a, a Google form for, um, a referral and of course the parent can refer the teacher can refer or the student can refer themselves of course we do a lot of phone calls you know kids will call and want to talk about their grad plan um, through k-12 they're able to pull up their grad plan and view that um, we do make phone calls to check in on students um, and, you know, talk about electives and that kind of thing. All right, I think that covered that one. So some of the best practices, actually, she showed you a lot of stuff. All of that is in the Google, um, the Google Drive that she's going to share. Um, so one of the things that I just wanted to talk about was, you know, be flexible, don't overthink it, and you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You know, use the resources that we put here. Um, I get a lot of my resources from Teachers Pay Teachers, and then I create my lesson for that. Um, and just take what you have and adapt it to that virtual environment. And then Candace is showing you a lot of different stuff about um, that's our counselor corner 
<clears throat> and another referral on there for the parent and the teach, uh, the student. And then, of course, we have all this information on our counselor website. We have that in our um, signature box through our emails so that parents readily have that available and they can go and check out um, all the information about high school. And I think that's it for me. If anybody has any questions, I will be happy to answer them. And then our, in the Google Drive, our contact information is there. So if I can help you with anything, um, please don't hesitate to reach out and let me know. Thank you. Okay, um, we have Chandrissa as well um, available. She's our lead counselor. She um, has worked with Eufaula City Schools. Chandrissa, do you want to introduce yourself just as a resource? Yes, ma'am. Hello, everyone. Um, like Candace said, I'm Chandrissa Malone, um, and we have an awesome team here at AVA. Um, with Miss Stephanie and Candace and I, and we also have a part-time counselor who is Hope. Um, our high school and um, we pretty much work together. Um, it's, it's very different because we work for two systems, um, what is our K-12 system and the state system, but we get things done. Miss Stephanie did an awesome job explaining everything that we do um, and communication is the key. We do um, have to talk to our students more than um, because we don't we can't have assemblies or call kids until like the lunchroom and tell them about different courses. So we do a lot of things online and we talk to parents and students a lot. Um, but it builds relationships, they trust us and we get things done sometimes. Um, it's a lot, but hey, we love what we do. We're here for you guys. Um, once again, our contact information is in the Google Drive. You can feel free to call us email us and we will help you as much as possible. Thank you. Hi, I'm Candace Doak and um, I um, do have teaching experience in brick and mortar, but I did not have counseling experience in brick and mortar. Um, but it has been such a great learning experience um, working with K-12 because we have counselors across the whole country and we um, kind of share best practices. And so I'm definitely available for any of you that might feel very overwhelmed right now. Um, I have this little thing that I would love for you to tell us in the chat uh, really quick. Um, tell me how you're feeling in the chat. So I, I loved this from board teachers. It says, administration, please go easy on your students and try not to overwhelm them with information. Also administration, here are 75 email links to brand new resources and please uh, spend time getting familiar with them. And then also we're holding a Zoom faculty meeting at 8 a.m. and your PLCs will continue as normal. So does anybody relate to that right now, especially even in training like this where you're like, wow, there is a lot um, and I'm just looking for, you know, something specific. <laughs> yeah, lots of meetings. Um, yeah, so I guess, you know, we just really want to be available to you all. I don't want this session to be um, even more overwhelming for you or, you know, I know that some of y'all might just be looking like for how do we have confidentiality in this online experience or, you know, something like that. And so that is why we have um, we, yeah, so that's why we have this Google Drive made for y'all. Someone said um, the link wasn't working for them, so I'm just going to try again to put it in the chat. Um, but we can also probably email it out with Ms. Eller. Um, but, you know, we have this Google form in here. If you have questions or if you have great ideas to share with everyone to add to the Google Drive, we would love to have that submitted in here. Um, but we also have our contact information. And I promise we 
depend on each other. So we are also available for you if you are trying to do something techie but can't quite figure it out. We are totally available to help. So please don't worry about reaching out. Um, and you know, I, this is just mainly what we are wanting to offer is just a resource um, for you all. We don't want it to be any more overwhelming. So, you know, use what you can find here. Tell us if you need us to help you make something. We're totally there for you. Um, let me just go through this, make sure. So yeah, we have that Google Drive for you. Um, so, you know, are there any other questions that we can help you with? And we can also have Brianna say anything if she wants to. Um, yeah, it's just a new normal for sure. Yeah, can I say something real quick to Chandressa? Yeah. I see that a lot of people saying they're overwhelmed. And when I first started in 2016, uh, it, and work from home, it's like you wake up and you lay down and you still work in, your brain won't shut off and all that good stuff because it was new to me. Um, but now I know to take time from the computer, take a walk, um, take deep breaths. Um, and I know, and it's easier now to plan than it was in a brick and mortar because no one is coming in interrupting besides emails and phone calls. Um, but just take deep breaths, um, take a walk outside if you have to, um, and just know that we're here, just giving you guys some encouraging words because it can be overwhelming and stressful. But hey, um, like Ms. Staten said, that we're in this together and we're here for you guys if you need us. Candace, I read in the chat that someone said they feel like they're working 24 hours a day. That was one of the things that was a little bit of an adjustment because you do feel kind of drawn to come in and sit down at your computer at all hours of the night. And I, I like what Erica said about setting those boundaries that you have kind of the boundaries of a, a work day, establish what your work day is and try to kind of stick to that. It was a little bit funny to me that people that I, when I retired, they thought that, oh, you're working from home now. How great, great, great. And since I've seen those people, they have a little bit more understanding of what working from home is. But that would be my advice to do exactly what Erica said, set your boundaries about what your work day looks like and try to stick with that. Yeah, and I know a lot of people um, might be wondering how do you still you know, do this planning with students and stuff. And I, you know, I would encourage you to, um, to make your website as, as full of information as you can and get used to making videos of yourself <laughs> or digital newsletters. Um, you can see how we did that in here if you're needing help. Um, you know, we did, let me see. We did, um, it's not pulling up right now, but we did um, book studies with our students to, you know, still meet standards. We um, gave them lots of resources. For high school specifically, we have so much information in here for our kids to, to literally walk through every step of making a decision <laughs> about their path. Um, and, you know, you can still be available to your kids. Um, you just have to put a little bit more creativity in there um, with how you do it. So, you know, we are totally willing to help you with that if, if that virtual creativity is not your strength. So just reach out to us and we would be happy to, to work with you. Um, Brianna, did you wanna go over your awesome uh, links and stuff with everyone? Sure. Hey guys, I am Brianna Hunter. I am the counselor for ALDCA. And so I was thrown into what y'all are experiencing right now um, in August. And so as a new school counselor and a new virtual school counselor, I, I was struggling. And so my motto has been, sometimes you got to get creative. And so definitely relying on the wonderful ALBA counselors. They've been a great help. And so some of these resources that I have found to be super helpful, therapist aid, it's wonderful. If you are needing help with mental health, SEL, if you go on there, create a free account. They have interactive 
um, fun activities with students such as um, they can create a bug and name their bug and then you can work on coping skills and playing games with your bug and matching cards. Um, there's one for ADHD, there's one for anger management. And it goes from elementary to high school. So it's very applicable with students as hands-on and fun. Um, PBIS World and Everfire are also some great resources for SEL. Some virtual resources. So what has helped me being a new school counselor? School counseling Facebook groups. And I know it sounds silly, but they have been phenomenal. And I am posting in the chat the ones that I have found that are helpful. And so if you are needing topics, if you're needing help with anything, people have done it. So why reinvent the wheel? But again, sometimes you do have to get a little creative with the virtual world. This um, on the screen is an example of one resource that I found that was phenomenal. So they broke it down into tech tools. So the different virtual um, platforms you can use, Zoom, Google Classroom, Screencast-O-Matic, so making videos to send out to students. It's amazing. More comprehensive resources um, for Jesus students. And then it even breaks it down into elementary, middle, and high school. There's PD, there's ethical guidelines, and then mindfulness and yoga to incorporate mental health and SEL. Um, making gratitude rocks. I made gratitude rocks with my students and they loved it. Um, just having that time to be creative and practice gratitude. And so these Facebook groups, I can't go on and on enough about how wonderful they have been. Um, if you'll go back to the PowerPoint slide, Candice. Thank you. And so some of these you can see are already on here, um, but the screencast and matic so making fun, quick little videos to send out to your students. Bitmoji, and so like on Snapchat, you have your Bitmoji. I use it on my computer and I send it in emails. I send it, um, I put it in PowerPoint presentations. It's just something fun that students can relate to. They think it's cute. Padlet. GimKit, Kahoot, TestMoz, you may be familiar with these, but they're just great resources um, if you're teaching guidance for them to practice questions while playing a game. And career exploration, one of the biggest ones I know for my, uh, I think I have some career coaches in here in Nefris, it's huge. And so there are speakers, all kinds of career exploration for free. Um, I can't even begin to even try to imagine how many speakers they have on there. There's, if there is a career that you can think of, it's on there. And so you can get a live speaker, you can send videos to your students. It's just a wonderful resource. And of course, using Cooter with your students. Uh, how do you use your Bitmoji? If you will just Google it, I know that sounds crazy, but just Google it and it will be added to your toolbar in Chrome. And that is all for me. Someone said, um, let's see, I'm trying to go back up. They said, how do you account for whether your students are utilizing your services? You know, you can't just walk um, into their classroom and get them. They can't just walk into your office. Um, I was going to try to show you, um, you know, you can make Google Forms. And I have a, a getting started thing on there, but you can put like your video inside your Google Form. Um, well, I can always help you with that if you need to, but um, you can put a video from YouTube inside your Google form and then have questions there for your kids to answer and submit to you. So, you know, that's one way to gauge if they are actually accessing their resources um, and if they have thoughts about it or questions. Um, and how do you invite them to your small group? So um, we definitely use the phone a lot to call people. Um, and we send emails. So, you know, just if you have students that you're definitely trying to work with, you need to have, you know, good contact information for them. Um, and do we get participation in the small groups? Um, yes. Uh, and, you know, and like, okay, so let me open up one. You definitely want to have a way for them to like use their hands 
and not feel like they're just sitting there staring at you. Um, <laughs> you wanna give them things to work on and, and maybe even games to play with you. And that way they're, they don't feel like they're just like sitting there with their webcam on staring at an adult <laughs> talking about their feelings because a lot of them won't want to do that. Um, and then let's see. Okay, someone said, do you need to have more parental contact in the virtual setting? And that is a yes. So what we have found is that if you don't have your parents on board in a virtual setting, you're probably not going to reach your students, okay, or not effectively. So that parent engagement and parent relationship building is huge. So, you know, those phone calls to the families to just check in on them and just say that you're the school counselor and, you know, you're building um, that, you know, they're just, you're just building that relationship and that awareness of who you are in the school, um, that's going to be huge for you to actually have the space to work with the kids after that, you know, that the parents will know you and trust you and give you <laughs> access to their kids. Um, Candace, can I say something real quick? Yeah. <clears throat> I know I said this in the elementary one, um, and it was a good question, was talking about um, the kids being able to talk. Um, our parents are really good about giving their students privacy. Uh, like, you know, we use Blackboard or Zoom to schedule our sessions. And you cut on the webcam. Usually our middle school and high school kids, they're usually by themselves in, in their room or whatever. And their parents give them the privacy that they need. Um, so um, they, they respect their, their child's privacy and they respect what we're doing with the child. So um, they're usually really good about that. That was a question that we received in elementary school. So I just thought I would throw that in there because um, they are really good about that. Yeah. Um, and uh, Ms. Eller is reminding everyone about the Google form for the PowerSchool. I put it in the Google Drive right here. Um, you, can, you can also complete it there, I believe. Um, and, you know, I tried to just put everything there. So we have the recording for elementary available, and then I'll put the recording for today in there. Um, and the PowerPoints are in there. Um, so hopefully anything that you guys might need later um, will be available for you. Any last questions? Someone said, can you show Nephris? Um, Brianna, can you share your screen? Or do you have access to do that? Okay. Let me pull it up real quick. So this is Nepris, and so they have playlists already made that are broken into grade, ooh, I can't talk today, grade bands. And so you can look for upcoming industry chats. So these are speakers um, that are coming up. There's videos. And so if you just want to send out a video to your students to watch, like I said, there are so, so many. If you can think of a job or a career, it's going to be on here. <laughs> And so they even have help with um, lesson plans. You can create a session request. So if there is a specific job that you're wanting to look into, you can send a request. I know one thing that we have talked about doing at ALDCA is um, doing Alabama specific jobs or Alabama specific speakers. So that way it applies more to our students. But there's session calendars. And so browse upcoming industry chats. They have virtual STEM fairs. We did one where I sent out how to build a roller coaster. It's really neat. Um, just really anything you can think of. There's college and career readiness series. 
It's pretty phenomenal, guys, and it's free. <laughs> this has been awesome. So if you're looking for a specific grade, it's over here. This is Nippers, and I can put it in the chat as well. Thank you, Brianna. Are there any other questions uh, before we leave you today? I know that um, we cannot give our counselors a round of applause where they can hear it, but I do so very much appreciate their willingness today to come and share these best practices and resources with you. You have our contact information in the Google Drive. You also have my email address. If you have any questions, concerns, or uh, need further information, please do not hesitate to reach out to us because like someone put in the chat box, we are all in this together and we are here to support each other. So thank you so much for joining us today. Hopefully we'll get the Power School PD number worked out. If not, make sure you've registered using that Google form link that was put in there and hope you all have a blessed day. Thank you so much.